or false? The direction field gives you information about the speed of a solution. False, right. The vector field does. The direction field is when you take all the vectors and scale them to the same length. Because um, the length of the vector tells you about how fast the solution is being graphed. So when you scale them, you lose that information. Okay, in the expression f of y, with arrows over the f and over the y, the inputs and the outputs are both vectors. Yeah. Right, so this is a function whose inputs are vectors, right, meaning it could be two or more numbers, some list of numbers, and the outputs, once the function does its function machine magic, its output is also a list of numbers. <clears throat> so that was some confusing notation that um, a few people asked me about in the reading. In general, how do you find the in equilibrium points um, of a system? Set the derivatives, set both derivatives equal to zero. Um, equations, derivatives equal to zero. What did you say? That's fine. Yeah. Because if you think of it as a if you think of it as a vector, then you could say that it's just a single function. Right. So you can set it equal to zero. You can you can get it. You you get credit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so some notation. There was some new notation um, used in the reading. So this is the predator-prey system that we spent a lot of time discussing last class. R prime and F prime. We got rabbits and we got foxes. Um, we're going to express this system using vector notation. So remember, vectors are denoted with bold letters or with a little arrow above them. Either of those things can represent a vector. When I'm writing on the board, I typically use the arrow because like, I don't want to have to color over and over to make it bold. Um, so we're going to let p of t denote the vector r of t, f of t. So this is a vector that has two components, the number of rabbits and the number of foxes. If you wanted to save some paper, you could write it horizontally also. You can write vectors either way. So this means you can define another vector, p prime, that's r prime f prime, and then you can put the formulas in, right? These are my formulas for r prime and f prime. So for every rf, for every vector, or you could think of it as a point in the rf plane, right? For every r and f value, you can calculate an r prime and an f prime value that defines a vector. So my inputs, right, are rf, right? This is my input vector. And then we apply the function p prime, right? And we get r prime, f prime. So that's all it is, right? For every rf, you can calculate an r prime and an f prime from the formulas they gave you. Um, there's no there's no t um, in the formulas. So for every moment in time, there's a number of rabbits and there's a number of foxes. Oh, t, yes, t, yeah. All right, so for every r and f in the rf plane, those are points, right? you can calculate an r prime and an f prime, right? And r prime and f prime is the derivative of p, right? So those are actually tangents to the solution curve, okay? Derivatives are tangent lines, so we have um, derivatives to the solution curve p, and when you plot a bunch of these vectors in the rf plane, we, call, we create a vector field. So if I want to calculate a few vectors in the vector field, so let's look at the point 0, 0, right? So when rf is 0, 0, I want to calculate p prime 
evaluated at zero. I want to make sure I use the notation correctly. P prime is R prime F prime, and the inputs are T's. Okay, so I have to write it like this. So for RF, for zero, zero, RF, Okay, so for each RF, I can get an R prime F prime that is going to be a, a tangent line. Okay, so if I plug 0, 0 into my equations for R prime and F prime, what do I get? 0, 0. Okay, so, so at 0, 0, I draw a vector that has the points in the 0, 0 direction, which means it's just a point, right? Just a point. All right, let's do 1, 1. If I take the point 1, 1, and I plug 1, 1 into my formulas for R prime and F prime. So plug in 1 for R and 1 for F, and I get 2 minus 1.2, which is 0.8. And negative 1 plus 0.9 is negative 0.1. Okay. So at 1, 1, I'm going to draw a vector that points... 0.8 comma negative 0.1. That's a vector that I draw starting at the point 1, 1. So at 1, 1, here's my point. I need to go right from there. I need to go right 0.8 down 0.1, and I draw that vector. And I can just do this for a whole bunch of points RF. And any point I pick, let's do like 3, 4, right? Then my vector that tells me about the speed and direction of my solution would be 2 times 3 is 6. That'd be 12. I guess I need a calculator. Just not on tests. Okay, so I have 2 times 3 minus 1.2 times 3 times 4, negative 8.4, and then negative 4 plus 0.9 times 12 is 6.8. All right, so at the point 3, 4, I'm going to put a vector, negative 8.4, 6.8. So it would point left negative 8.4, up 6.8. So this would be a really long vector, like something like this. So if you plot a bunch of these vectors in the RF plane, you create what's called a vector field. Okay, so I've done three of them. It already looks a mess, right? <clears throat> it's tedious, and it gets messy fast. But it's the kind of thing that a computer would be really good at. A TI-89 can do it. Um, so if you have a TI-89 and you want to make vector fields, um, you can just Google how to do that on an 89. And then I use this free software whenever I'm making vector fields called Winplot. Um, if you're interested, I can show you how to use it if you want to use it to like check homework answers or something. Um, but I typically won't ask you to create vector fields, but we'll provide them when they're necessary. So here's a bunch of vectors um, for the predator-prey system. Okay. So we had done uh, a couple of them. We did 1, 1, which pointed sort of like that, and 3, 4 which was like super long and pointing that way. And you can start to see what the solutions might do. It looks like they cycle around in a circle because the vectors are pointing their tangent to the solution curve. So um, the arrows tell us about the direction of the solution curve, and the length of the arrows tell you how fast the solution curve is being drawn. 
because we kind of lose in the when we look at the RF plane, you kind of lose um, the time dimension, but the arrows are what's um, accounting for time, and they tell you the speed that the solution gets drawn. So your book has this neat little analogy where they talk about um, imagine yourself in a parking lot and that's that's marked with arrows of varying lengths, and you're supposed to drive the path following the arrows and speed up and slow down according to the length of the arrows. <clears throat> you did um, on Wednesday, at the start of class, yeah. I won't test you on it or ask you to do it by hand again, but I was trying to just... Yeah, we've already done that, yeah, so... <clears throat> But, okay, so the problem with a vector field is that when you have arrows of all different lengths, it can get messy very fast, and they start to, like, cross over each other, and it's hard to kind of lose what's happening. So, um, usually we scale them all to a uniform size, and you do lose some info, some information about um, the speed, about what's happening in time, but the resulting picture is so much easier to read that we usually are okay with losing that information. Um, and the result is called a direction field. So this is the direction field for the predator-prey model that we've been looking at for two classes now. On the left, this is just the direction field. And you can, like, you can see what all the different solutions look like for different initial conditions. So if I pick an initial condition 2, 1, it looks, you know, like right there. And then I just kind of try to follow the vectors, right, follow where they go and they do something like that. And that was the phase portrait or the solution curve that we came up with last class. We created these last class by you doing Euler's method, right? And then I, I only had to do a few steps, but I said that's how you create the solution curves. But you could also start with a vector field and trace out several solution curves to create a phase portrait. Um, and the, the um, vector field can sometimes suggest where equilibrium points are. Like this looks like there's, it's cycling in tighter and tighter and tighter, and it looks like I must have some kind of an equilibrium point somewhere in this vicinity, right? And then it's not quite as obvious that you have one at zero, zero, but you do. Um, so you can, your vector field can suggest where equilibrium points are, but don't forget, you can always solve for them also, right? Just set your two derivatives equal to zero and solve. And we did that last class. So little note, you might have been wondering why we used t as our independent variable all semester so far. I was using dy dt for all my derivatives instead of dy dx. And the two, there's two reasons. One is because almost all of our models use time as the independent variable, so we call it t. But now that we're dealing with systems, we can let x and y be our two dependent variables that both depend on time. And when you sketch solution curves, they end up in the x, y plane. In this case, this was rabbits and foxes. But in gen and when you use more generic variables, it's x and y. All right, you guys can do some on your own. <laughs>